joining us now to talk about that concern and more is Congressman Scott Perry uh, from the great state of Pennsylvania, Republican. Hello, Congressman. Hey, Steve. Good, uh, good day. Uh, thanks for having me on. Well, it's my pleasure. Thanks for what you're doing. Uh, there was a, a, a joint um, uh, hearing, I guess, yesterday um, uh, the, with uh, many, uh, many uh, committees and uh, to talk about the data sharing or the, the, the hub. The data hub. Yeah, right? a for scary, Obamacare. Scary thing, a data hub. So, yeah, so, so tell all, people what this data hub is and what your concerns are. Well, the data hub is, is where all the information goes into and then and the different agencies pick the information out of it. So you've got to understand that five separate federal agencies will have your information. They will know your social security number. They will know where you live. They will know your, your age, your, ad, your address, your, your email address. They'll have your, all your financial records. They'll have your health history, your employment status. They will know whether you ever had a, a DUI and, your, and your, you know, your legal status. And so this data hub is the kind of the – it's the hub of all this information. And, you know, certainly in light of what happened at the IRS recently, we are very concerned. We want to know who's in charge. So at the hearing I asked – Who's in charge? And the gentleman who uh, was there on behalf of CMS, and those are the folks that are going to be helping to run this thing, he said, well, there's uh, somewhere close to a dozen people that are working in charge of the data hub, but there's not one person, so there will be no accountability. Now, this same person that I talked to who is one of this one of these 12 people in charge of the data hub was not sure who determined what questions they asked. Like, they ask you your ethnicity. Like, what does that have to do with your health records? They ask you, you know, they ask a woman whether she's pregnant or not. All these personal things. But yet he couldn't tell me uh, who, who was in charge of asking those questions. He couldn't tell me uh, where the records were going to be stored. Uh, he couldn't tell me about a company called Serco that is being contracted by the federal government to store records for us and review them and uh, be a part of the data hub and so on and so forth. This is a foreign company, by the way, under investigation for fraud. Yet he knew nothing about it, and this is one of the people that's in charge of our data. We're absolutely concerned. We do it. Look, this is why Republicans, this is why conservatives, this is this is why Americans are, are concerned about Obamacare in general, because we know they're going to know too much about us and they're going to screw it up. Well, I, I, I could not agree with you more, uh, and that and, and a million other reasons as well, Congressman. And uh, so, so how is, I mean, is this going to be remedied? Uh, is this full steam ahead? Well, one of the things we, we hope to do, Steve, uh, talking about maybe defunding, is defunding the, the, the money that would pay for this data hub, because if they can't pay for it, then hopefully, and of course, they should not be able to enact it. Uh, for instance, now, in, in the hearing, there's a guy named Alan Duncan, who's the Assistant Inspector General for Audit, Treasury, Inspector General for Tax Administration, who I read his report and on no less than half a dozen occasions said the IG, so that's nonpartisan, it is, uh, you know, it is just a, 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 an agency that looks out for what's happening in the government, uh, at least on six occasions during his testimony, he said that they were very concerned about what was happening with the data processing and and uh, the uh, the ability of the federal government to roll this program out on time. And I want to read this, just this short statement. The lack of adequate testing could result in significant delays and errors in accepting and processing Affordable Health Care Act applications for health insurance coverage. Yeah, you, you would like to think it's been tested somewhere. It hasn't been tested anywhere, and they all said it yesterday. They can't. They don't know who tested it. They don't know what it was tested for or, or whether it was tested at all. They're going to roll it out. You're going to think you're insured. You're not going to be insured. You're going to have a little, you're going to have a minor scrape and you're not going to have insurance. Well, you're here, going to have a major injury or disease and you're going to go to the doctor and you're not going to know where you stand, but they're forcing it down our throats anyway. Congressman, here's the, here's one of the problems. There were, there were major IRS uh, hearings today um, and I'm looking at Politico. Fo Foxnews.com has it as their lead story and it's a big revelation um, that with you have auditors testifying that their orders to harass uh, to conservative groups came from way up the chain, yeah. uh, and I'm looking all over Politico. Now, by now this could change, but I'm looking all over Politico. I don't see the story. So my point in telling you that is the, the, the media will hide this. The media won't get this out there. The media will do anything Obama wants them to do, so the word will not get out in the mainstream, quote-unquote, media. But let me ask you, you said defunding. You and I were talking before we went on the air, yeah. to, truth be told, yeah. about the conversations I've had with um, Scott Garrett and Peter King. And, 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 I, and I, like so many other Republicans, had been looking forward to defunding uh, or the defunding uh, by the House of, uh, of, of parts of Obamacare. Congress has the purse strings. Yep. And, and Congressman Garrett and Kip King, King agreed that the leadership doesn't want to go there. They don't want to risk a government shutdown 
when I, I know it would motivate the base, and I know 40, 55% of America doesn't want this health care, I, I think it's a winning issue. Well, listen, I, I uh, pledge to uh, vote to defund Obamacare and repeal it at every turn and any turn, and I'm going to continue to do that, and we're going to do a piecemeal or wholesale any way we can as members. Leadership thinks it's a fight that they can't win with the president, that the American people will turn on them. You know what? And, and I respect their, uh, you know, their, their experience and so on and so forth. But let me tell you what, this is what I know as a military officer. You can never win a fight that you don't uh, engage in, okay? you got to get in the war to win the war. And, uh, I, I, you know, I know we've got to be smart about it and reasoned about it, but uh, dismissing it out of hand, I think, is, is leaving some things on the table. The American people want it defunded, and, uh, and they want it stopped any way that we can. And that's why they put people like me in the House of Representatives. Absolutely. So you're, a friend, you're, a, you're a new guy. You're, uh, what, you're, this is your first term, right? Yeah, I'm in mean, six months. In. Yeah, yeah. Well, I, there's going to be a lot of disappointed people uh, when the word starts to spill around that because a lot of people have been asking me, and I'm talking about congressional correspondents. I bring it up to them. I say, when? What about the defunding? They say that's a good question. And and the same thing with people who are activists against Obamacare. And we keep asking each other, when are we going to see some defunding? And now we find out that you know, I'm not blaming you, but now we find yeah. out that it, 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 they don't have the guts to do it. Well, I think it, you know, it, it's probably with all deference to the leadership, I think that they're trying to. Uh, uh, think strategically, and they want to win out of this. I think that there may be opportunities to defund critical parts of it in other packages, like debt ceiling and so on and so forth, maybe medical device taxes, some things that, uh, you know, the IPAB, the Independent right, Review right. Board, and piecemeal approach uh, linked to other things where the Senate has to, in fact, uh, vote for it and the constituencies can pressure them, it, because it's, you know, certainly it's the president. He doesn't, he, he loves the thing, and he wants to do everything he can. Oh, to absolutely. It. He's but going the Senate is Democrat, and, I they, know, I yeah, know. and they, they are going to have to be drug screaming, screaming and kicking. It's going, to, it's going to require the help of constituencies, and it's going to require some help from the media, uh, which you're included in. So I think we can do it, um, and, and, and you know, members like me and Congress are going to continue to push for it on a wholesale or piecemeal basis, however we can. Right. We are well, not done with the fight. I will, I will remember this conversation, Congressman. Listen, thank you very much uh, for the time and for your efforts uh, on behalf of the American people. Steve, have a great day. Take Thanks care. So you much. too. Congressman right, cool. Scott Perry from the 4th Congressional District in the great state of Pennsylvania.